And a very close scrutiny of the alleged references to Muhammad in the Bible as a prophet, they absolutely have no relation to the prophet of Muhammad, nor prophesy his coming. Uh, Muhammad is not mentioned in the Old Testament. Muhammad is not mentioned anywhere from Genesis to Revelation. And Muhammad is God too messed to death a joke. inspire thee as we inspired Noah and the prophets after him, as we inspired Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes, and Jesus and Job and Jonah and Aaron and Solomon, and as we imparted unto David the Psalms. The verse we've just heard is from chapter 4 of the Quran. In the verse, God is affirming to humanity that Muhammad is indeed the recipient of a divine guidance, just as Noah, Abraham, and the rest of the prophets. However, some Christians and Jews today don't believe that Muhammad was a prophet and the covenant that God made with Abraham. And since the Quran is not their book of authority, in this video I'm going to show you that the book you're holding in your hands contains the name off the seal of prophethood, the Prophet Muhammad. As known, the Old Testament was preserved in the Hebrew language. In the fifth chapter of the Shir Hashirim, which is one of the five Mejlit or sacred scrolls that are part of the Hebrew Bible, or for short the Song of Solomon, as Christians know it today. That chapter is discussing someone. Jews will say it is discussing Solomon, while Christians will say it is discussing Jesus. Considering this is the Songs of Solomon, it would seem logical that it is discussing Solomon. The verses, describing this mystery man, have the narrator's speech conjugated in the feminine, meaning it is a woman who is describing this man. So it is possible that it is one of Solomon's wives discussing her husband Solomon. However, Christians assert that Jesus is being discussed, and that the chapter is describing a man who was not yet alive at that point. A prophecy. In reading the English translation of Song of Songs 516, it finishes the description by saying, he is altogether lovely but what most people don't know, is that the name of that man was given in the original Mejilat. Here is verse 16, and how it is written in ancient Hebrew, before introducing the vowels, in the 8th century. From the Hebrew Bible, on scripturetext.com. Here is the word in question. This word is made of four letters. Mem. Het. Mem. Dalit. Now when reading the word as it is written in its original form, with no vowels, it can be read as Muhammad, which is the name of the Muslim prophet, or as Mamad with no A after the H. According to Ben Yehuda's Hebrew English Dictionary, it is correctly pronounced as Muhammad, not Mamad. So how we're going to know for sure, if it's pronounced as Muhammad, the Muslim prophet, or as Mamad, a random Hebrew word, the only way is to give the verse to a rabbi, and say to him please read. Here is the Song of Songs 516, and how it is read by a rabbi from a Hebrew Jewish site. Please notice, the im in Hebrew, is a plural of respect. Here is the 
وخلو محمد 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 دین زاد دي في زرعي بنوت يروشلايم Here is the famous SDL translation tool which includes a professional human translation as well as an online translation. We're going to copy our Hebrew word of the Song of Songs directly from the Jewish site. It's the same site where you can hear the rabbi reading the verse in Hebrew. All links are in the description. So, we're going to copy the word and paste it and ask, please translate. Are they going to translate the meaning of the name of that person? As the Bible translators did. Which is the praise and the lovely one or are they going to keep the name as it is? Well, see it yourself. Here is the world lingo translator. The result is the same. It's Muhammad. O oh, children of Israel, remember my favor wherewith I favored you and fulfill your part of the covenant. I shall fulfill my part of the covenant and fear me and believe in that which I reveal confirming that which ye possess already of the scripture and be not first to disbelieve therein and part not with my revelations for a trifling price and keep your duty unto me confound not truth with falsehood nor knowingly conceal the truth and verily we gave unto Moses the scripture and we caused a train of messengers to follow after him and we gave unto Jesus, son of Mary, clear proofs of Allah's sovereignty, and we supported him with the Holy Spirit. Is it ever so, that when there cometh unto you a messenger from Allah, with that which ye yourselves desire not, ye grow arrogant, and some ye disbelieve, and some ye slay? And they say, Our hearts are hardened, Nay, but Allah hath cursed them for their unbelief. Little is that which they believe. And when there cometh unto them a scripture from Allah, confirming that in their possession, though before that they were asking for a signal triumph over those who disbelieved, and when there cometh unto them that which they know to be the truth, they disbelieve therein. The curse of Allah is on disbelievers. And when Jesus, son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, lo, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming that which was revealed before me in the Torah, and bringing good tidings of a messenger who cometh after me, whose name is the praised one. Yet, when he hath come unto them, with clear proofs, they say, This is mere magic. O people of the scripture, why disbelieve ye in the revelations of Allah, when ye yourselves bear witness to their truth? O people of the scripture, why confound ye truth with falsehood, and knowingly conceal the truth? Those unto whom we gave the scripture recognize this revelation, as they recognize their sons. But lo, a party of them knowingly conceal the truth. O people of the scripture, now hath our messenger come unto you, expounding unto you much of that which ye used to hide in the scripture, and forgiving much. Now hath come unto you light from Allah, and a plain scripture. We sent thee not save as a mercy for the peoples. Say, it is only inspired in me that your God is one God. Will ye then surrender unto him? He was a mercy to mankind. 
He was a great favor. He was sent with an irrefutable truth. He was a man dealing gently with all people. Never in his life did he ever lift his hand to hit any human being. Ever! Not a servant, not a wife, not a child, not a friend. He was a mercy to the world. He was the best example to follow. He was the last prophet of mankind. He was sent to all the mankind and the jinn. He was victorious over all systems and he was created on an exalted standard. Never drank alcohol throughout his life. Never used any kind of intoxicant. He never committed fornication or adultery. This was the manner of the Prophet His tolerance, his mercy, his patience, his integrity. Feeding the poor, visiting the sick, discharging the army, acting as a statesman, acting as an arbiter, sewing his clothes, washing his house, shopping for the food, doing all the things that you and I do, and at night, standing in prayer for four or five hours at a time. And in the day, fighting the battles, discharging the armies, giving the ahkam and the rulings, explaining the Quran, instructing the people in behavior. How could a man do all of that? and stand four or five hours at night at one time. What kind of human being could that be? It was a messenger. It was a prophet. This was a man with a message. This was a man in this world, but always thinking about the hereafter. Oh Muslims, oh non-Muslims, think about this kind of man. Have you heard of such a man? Have you ever seen such a man? Have you read about such a man? He was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, mercy upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad mercy upon mankind Teacher of all mankind oh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajah